channel my name is Katie and today we are doing a DIY and I actually really really love DIYs I've been doing DIYs like ever since I'm super young my dad is an avid DIYer as well so we both just really love building things and kind of just you know recreating stuff um, if we can so today I'm doing the infamous um tile side table i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but obviously from the title of this video you know exactly what i'm talking about because you clicked on this video to see this diy so i've been seeing a whole lot of diys on those kind of um furniture items with the tile uh, detailing on it and i'm absolutely in love i don't know if this is like just because it's trendy, but I'm really, really loving the look. I'm gonna be doing that today. So I um, chose to do this kind of tall side table um, with the tile detailing. And so I got all of the material I need. I got the grout, I got the tiles, I got the glue, and I hope it'll turn out good because this is my first time doing um, tiling. And so I heard that it's quite, difficult and tricky because of the whole uh, grout texture you have to get right the glue as well making sure everything is aligned and everything looks good um i've never done that before but i think it'll be okay i think it'll be fine so my dad made me the base which i'm gonna stick all of the ceramic tiles on so i'll be explaining to you guys the whole process from like a to z um it's my first time so it's probably not gonna be i mean the best but i hope this inspires you and i hope this helps you out if you're looking to recreate this kind of project as well um so let's get right into it so to start off my dad made me the wooden base which the tiles are going to be glued on um and the base was made out of plywood sheets so my dad bought this huge plywood sheet i, th I believe it was five by eight feet um i'll put the right dimensions right here and the thickness of the plywood sheet was five eighths of an inch i believe it's a bit of a thick um sheet so we could have gone for a thinner sheet so that the base would be lighter because now the whole um, item is going to end up being really really heavy because the base is already heavy from the wood and the tiles are pretty heavy as well so i would personally recommend going for a little bit thinner just so it's not as heavy but honestly if that's what you have at your hardware store by all means go for it so the size of the base is essentially a rectangle so it's 12 by 12 on top which is a square and then for the length it's 24 inches so that was the initial length measurement for the base um, however i did buy the ceramic tiles first before building the base and my dad actually cut the base according to the size of my tiles so the tiles are technically when i say technically 12 by 12. my dad measured them and they're actually um 11 something inches let me just check i think i have the dimensions here so the sheet is 11 and 7 8 inches so the square on top is instead of being 12 inches by 12 inches was 11 and 7 8 by 11 and 7 8 and then the sides were 23 and 7 8 um inches it's a little bit complicated so i think it's easier um if you're someone that's more visual like me i'll share all of the details right here and so for the tiles i went for a mesh ceramic tile so like i showed you it comes already made like this and this is sold as a 12 by 12 inches but like i said it's a little bit smaller than that so that's why we made the base a little bit smaller than 12 inches so instead of having to put all of the separators this is already all um equally separated so when you put the ground on top you won't have like a thicker ground on one side and the thinner ground on the other side so that's why i went for this 
These I bought at my local um, ceramic store and you can buy the sheets separately. So these were, I believe, $3.99 Per sheet and I bought 10 sheets um, I only need nine sheets because I'm not doing a bottom to my side table but I bought 10 just in case um, some of the tiles are broken or they chip and stuff you can always cut them and reuse the last sheet so I bought that the next thing that I got is this um, acro pro acryl pro acro pro ceramic tile adhesive so this one is just a regular um tile glue that i got from the hardware store this one says for wall and floor tile installation and it's supposed to be pretty easy and i took the smaller size because according to the back of it it should be able to cover my whole um side table i got a sponge and a little spatula like this i got this spatula because you're supposed to put the glue and then make kind of like these lines or ridges um, in the glue so that the tiles stick better we'll see and the last thing that i got is the grout so i did get this grout from the um, local hardware store they didn't have the biggest selection of grout but i didn't need any fancy grout i was just going for a darker color because my tiles are white so this is the grout that I got, it's in this color truffle, which is a dark, dark gray. I'm assuming it's almost gonna look black against the white, so I'm not really worried about that. And this one is from Polyblend and it's the sanded grout. I did some research and people said that sanded versus unsanded was kind of um, irrelevant if you're doing a small piece. Since my piece is so small, it's gonna be indoors and it's not gonna be you know, um, exposed to any water and stuff like that. I just went for the cheaper version, which is the sanded grout because the unsanded was a little bit more expensive. So that's all the material that I got. Um, I think that's all you need to know. Okay, so let's get started with this DIY. I'm a little bit nervous, but the first step is to apply the um, adhesive. So this is the ceramic tile adhesive. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna wear some gloves because first of all, I'm already about to lose a nail here. It like broke today. I'm gonna put some gloves on for protection and also to prevent my nails from um, completely falling off. So I'm not too sure. I'm reading the instructions here and all it says is using a flat side of troll. I don't know what troll is. Anyway, it says to apply a skim coat of adhesive, apply additional adhesive with notch side of troll held at a 45 degree angle, combing in one direction. Press down firmly into place. Adjust out promptly and beat in with block and rubber mallet. I, don't, I do not have a rubber mallet. So I think it says to apply this with a flat side of some kind of tool. I'm not too sure what a troll is um i'm pretty sure i don't have one i do have the thing that has a little teeth anyway i think i'm gonna kind of wing it i also do not have the block and rubber mallet so i'm just gonna press down with my hands hopefully it'll be okay <laughs> wish me luck <laughs> So 
I'm at the very last one. It was a bit more challenging than I thought it would be, separating all the tiles to make sure that they um, are well spaced and that they stick well is pretty hard. So I'm gonna do the last one before the glue um, solidifies. And yeah, actually I'm at the very last uh, bit of this glue. So it's actually perfect for this project. <laughs> According to the um, box of adhesive, it says to leave it for 24 hours before grouting. So I've seen a lot of videos where people don't wait 24 hours and they literally just start grouting right away. I think I'm going to wait just to be sure because I don't want to fuck it up because it's my first time doing this and I literally have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm going to follow the instructions that are on the box. So I'm going to wait 24 hours. So I'll see you guys tomorrow to do the grouting. So now I'm kind of looking at my side table and I kind of like it all white. So now I'm debating, do I put the dark grout or do I go for like a beige grout? I'd have to go buy that grout because I already have the dark grout. I'm just like, I don't know. I actually do not know. So quick update, we started grouting today, which I already thought it was going to be difficult, but it's like way more difficult than I thought. I think I underestimated it because the internet makes it seem way too easy. So we basically had to mix the, we bought sanded grout. So we mixed the sanded grout with some water. And basically the grout that I bought is um 3.1 kilograms and on the box it says approximately the surface that the whole box covers which was way more than oh thanks which was way more than what um i needed so we used one tenth of a box which honestly ended up way, being way too little it only covered like one side of the side table instead of the whole side table so i think our calculations were a little bit off so I'm going to remix some grout now to finish off the side table. But basically, it's a little bit difficult because of the texture. I don't know if it's because I don't have the appropriate tools or I just don't know how to do it. But basically, it's a bit hard to spread everything and to make everything even. Um, but I think I did an okay job. So we used the same spatula I used for the glue. It was previously washed. So I used that with my dad to spread everything and then I went in my with my fingers to smooth everything out and then according to the box we had to wait about 20 minutes for it to settle down and then go over with a damp sponge to remove the excess which we did um, and hopefully it turns out okay So from what I looked up on the internet, this is kind of the consistency that we're going for. So yeah, gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then remix it and then continue grouting. I also just realized that um, it's probably hard because the side table is standing. I think obviously if you're doing something on a flat surface, it's much easier to grout, but because this is like you know, completely vertical. I have to grout kind of like against gravity, which probably doesn't help. I've remade some grout here and I'm about to grout the rest of this side table. Hopefully that's enough because I'm not down to make more grout, but we shall see. You got that pretty smile, you got my chain locked. You're the only one with the key, you know that's hot. You never hold back, it's 
tell it how it is You always lay it down Even though it might offend But you got a sweet side You chill, never hype You're my kind of girl Baby, that's what I like Hey guys this is the situation right now it's a complete mess but we are done with the side table i literally almost broke my back <laughs> cleaning this thing and scrubbing and scratching all of the um excess grout that were on the tiles <laughs> I scrolled down the Insta page, saw a picture that I didn't want to see. He had his hand around your waist and a smile on your face like the way you look at me. Cause only eight months ago he was holding your hand, slow dancing and kissing the top of your head. And I don't know how to complete that. Cause you were friends, you were kids and it still feels like you just wanted me met. Yeah, I was so naive. That you've only felt this way for me You always tell me I'm the only one you wanna be with So why can't I believe it? Yeah, old boyfriends kinda scare me Cause they all got a little bit of history with you Even when you try to tell me I got no real reason to worry My mind starts to imagine things that never happened I start to believe that you're still in love With some other has been Baby, I'm just asking do you think I'm gonna be the last? Hello, so as you can see, I have successfully finished the side table. I wanted to come back on here um, and chat with you guys about my whole experience doing this DIY. So I have a few pointers to share with you guys and hopefully that helps you if you're trying to recreate this project because I did face a few challenges. So the first thing that I would suggest is to use unsanded grout. I use sanded grout because as I explained at the beginning of this video, um, it was a cheaper version and from my non-extensive research on the internet um, at the hardware store it seemed like there wasn't a big deal between the unsanded and the sanded grout however i did find that the sanded grout was really really difficult to work with um, i have not worked with unsanded grout but i can only imagine it being way easier because the sanded grout has sand in it it's very gritty and it's really hard to spread i was having a lot of trouble spreading it it was kind of clumping up and if i do put more water then the grout is too runny so i think that was um, pretty difficult to work with i was able to obviously do it but um, i would suggest unsanded grout the second thing is um, the whole grouting process in itself in regards to grouting i found that the instructions on the label of the box were really unclear um, it did say exactly like what to do but it was still unclear to what extent i had to like clean it and stuff like that so i did have to youtube a grouting video for it to be more clear but i already had done mistakes before watching the video so i'm here to help you guys with that so when you're grouting you go over the whole surface with the grout you're supposed to let it dry for 10 to 20 minutes before you remove the excess with a sponge so i didn't know to what extent i had to remove um, the haze or the excess grout with my sponge i found that i was smearing a lot of grout away and kind of like creating a lot of haze so i was getting really worried that i was removing too much grout from like the crevices and so i kind of left the haze and the grout sit on the tiles for too long so my first mistake was not cleaning the grout well enough the first time around 
So from the videos that I've watched on YouTube after doing this project is that when you're grouting and um, the surface has dried for 10 to 20 minutes, you're supposed to go in with the damp sponge and you remove as much excess grout as you can. If you end up removing too much or there's air bubbles, you can always go in with a second round of grout and kind of fill in those air bubbles or those spaces where the grout is thinner. I didn't know that. I thought um, I had to leave as much grout in as possible, but from the videos that I've watched, you're supposed to remove everything and kind of like really push the grout in with your sponge and um, remove as much excess as you can. So that was my first mistake because I left too much grout on and from doing that i left a lot of haze on the tiles and that was really really difficult to remove afterwards so after you've removed the excess then you have to wait about two hours before removing the excess haze um, with a cheesecloth according to the label of the box i didn't do that i kind of went back in with the damp sponge because from what i saw on youtube a lot of people were just using a damp sponge to go over and really clean the haze well at the end so what i did is i dampened the same sponge and a trick that uh, youtube taught me is that you go over the surface once with one face of the sponge and you turn it and you go over another area of that surface with the other side of the sponge and you clean it right away you don't go over the same area with a dirty sponge so always always rinse the sponge so that is what i've learned from the videos on youtube and from my mistake when grouting because I didn't clean the surface properly the first time around to remove the excess grout and I found myself having a lot of haze to remove um, after the two hour mark and that was really really hard to remove because it had already stuck to the tiles quite a bit so I would suggest doing a really good cleaning the first time around so that you don't have to scrub as hard the second time honestly that's probably the only pointers I have to tell you guys about so the unsanded grout and to clean the surface pretty well when you're grouting because honestly the rest of the steps of the project went pretty smoothly sticking the tiles on was really easy and then after cleaning then your project is pretty much done so that was um the project i'm really really happy with how it turned out i hope you guys enjoyed um watching this video and i hope you guys learned something today as always if you've liked this video please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time